another edition of Twins Talk with Senior Smoke here on HBC Sports. I'm Landon Evanson, and we got a lot to talk about today. Last week had quite a bit to do with housekeeping as the Twins were swept by Oakland and then turned the trick themselves against Kansas City. The starting pitching had been dicey until the Royals arrived at Target Field, but behind Kyle Gibson, Ricky Nolasco, and Kevin Correa, the rotation held its own, and Minnesota hopes to carry that momentum into a new week of play. But before we get to that, we'd like to remind you that by emailing the Beringer Word of the Week to Senior Smoke at HBCI.com, you'll be entered into a drawing for four seats behind home plate for the Twins game against the Texas Rangers on May 26, courtesy of Fox Sports North. And with that, we bring in Mr. Juan Beringer. Juan, how are you this morning? Good, good. Everything is great. And uh, it's good for the Twins. And, uh, and they play great this weekend after going um, all for nine and then um, put it together for the weekend. <laughs> right. So, uh, did you make it out to the park this weekend? I think you said you were going to one of the games over the weekend, right? Yeah, and I saw that Gibson going to fantastic games, and uh, he goes right at it, everybody. It like, looks like he's having confidence a little bit, and then throw your fastball right early, and then the breaking ball later, and I think that making him go a little longer than the deeper the two games, and then take it from there. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, pitching was much better over the weekend. And, uh, Speaking of which, you know, the Twins recovered from a sweep at the hands of the A's like we talked about. They had a sweep of their own over Kansas City. It was really the tale of two series. The Twins starters struggled against Oakland but performed very well against the Royals. Now it's early, but what are your impressions of the rotation's collective execution to this point? Well, you know, it's like I said before, the, 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 the starters basically got to be put together to his own and the own things and uh, how do they go thinking because they had to go six innings, seven innings at least two of these guys because the bullpen in every go be uh they go be so tired in the end of the season they not going to be supported a lot. But uh, this week and it's looking like everybody put together and pitches a couple of innings and they don't pitch a lot of behinds and uh, they take the count quick early and then uh, that's how they, it should be a little longer than behind the game and then complete execute for the sweep of Kansas City. Mm -hmm. You know, Kyle Gibson was a pitcher who came to Minnesota with a lot of talent. It was just a matter of health. Now, he's only made two starts so far this year, but he looks pretty good so far, doesn't he? Yeah, he's looking like a pretty good. He's, he's looking like he's not nervous. He's looking like he's in charge. And then the fastball, I, I think that the first start when he did it, he's looking like a little more nervous. And But now he feels like a little more confident. That with fastball, he's really good, but 90, 92, and then good breaking ball. And I think that he's the more of the games they go deeper, I think he could be more better and more fantastic. And I think he could be a probably a 15 game winning if he continues to pitch like he did at the last time. Well, that would be a very welcome addition to the Twins rotation, no question. Um, you know, there were some fireworks between Glenn Perkins and Josh Donaldson last week with the Twins and A's. Um, I had a little bench clearing, no punches thrown or anything. But how can that sort of thing light a fire with a team and bring them closer together? And uh, I remember that now that you say that. I remember that Dan Gladden and Lombardos, he did, he did it to something like that early in 87. But uh, the man had to get out in front of everything, and uh, they cleared uh, everything, checked the hands, and he said, let's go play baseball. That's where you come in here. He, the, whatever it is, let it go. And this is a long season. Uh, everybody's, you know, you spend more time the players and the clubhouse and the road and then they, your own family. I think it, you have to be, you know, befriend everybody. So at least you got to say hi to everybody and not be <laughs> angry. Then. And that, that's happened a lot of the time. And, and sometimes people is in the right mood and you say something they don't like it. Uh, you know, everybody try to say something they can be, try to help and you know, go up and say, you know, you got to put your thing together. Uh, and I said, he, he pitched good in the nine innings, and he looked like he challenged everybody. Then fastball, I saw that only throw one breaking ball, and uh, they hit it hard to the right field, and uh, he coming back to the fastball, and he strike out. And, uh, and then the last hour, he tried to catch it. Uh, it's nice for the Twins. The game is ended that way, and uh, he had his safe, and, you know, had to throw another pitch. Mm -hmm. Just a reminder for everybody, the Bearing Gear Word of the Week for this week is sweep. Send that word sweep to SeniorSmoke at HBCI.com for, for your entry into the drawing for four tickets against the Rangers on May 26th. Um, you know, Pedro Florimon 
has really proven to be an exceptional, exceptional, exceptional sorry, defensive shortstop. Lost the ability to speak there for a second. But he's really struggling at the plate. You know, the Twins are performing well offensively at the moment. But can they get away with Florimone's unproductive at-bats over the long haul? I mean, it's not even getting hits, driving in runs. It seems he's in situations where he can move a runner over and he's not really getting that job done. Is that something the Twins can do for the whole year and be able to get away with that? Yeah, and I think, you know, I never seen, seen I, play, I started playing baseball, and uh, uh, Tom Kelly used to move a lot of the running, and I think that his player, like, the shortest of the off, he had, you know, being hit too much right now, but I think that uh, he can be available to bond and move it to, like, to the next guy, maybe he can have his own chat and have a base hit to his score. I think that they try to make it in, I talked to Tony about that thing the other day, and Tony said, where you know he can say anything for the money that he can get, so he can do something about it. And um, you know, it, it's a lot of things you, you can do with this guy. He's fast, and uh, he can try to run for bases. And uh, everybody looking like he want to go to yards, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and then sometimes you know give the pitch that you would like to hear. <laughs> right. And uh, I, I think that I saw Mauer too. They still second base. I said, well, he's kind of changed the attitude now. <laughs> Joe Maurer there for a moment. I'll just look at the situation with him now moving out from behind the plate. He's playing first base. Obviously, we all know what he can do with the bat, but I think he has at least 14 strikeouts two weeks into the season, and that's, you know, really his game is putting the bat on the ball. And I know you've alluded to before about him, you know, needing to drive the baseball a little bit more, but um, sometimes I wonder, is it possible for a, a hitter to be a little too patient? It almost seems as if Joe Maurer takes so many pitches, he gets himself in pitcher's counts. here we'll get back to the pitching again you know we just talked about the sweep that the twins had against kansas city they're gonna be going up against toronto here this week do you think the twins will continue to pitch well against a really strong offensive club like the blue jays or do you think part of this past weekend's stellar pitching performance was the fact that kansas city is really struggling at the plate i think the Kansas city is a little trouble in the play because when i talked to the i used to play that with uh net joe's and uh and met and uh, he used to be the uh, coach in the bullpen for the Atlanta Braves, and uh, and uh, he said the team is still new, and they lose in a couple of free agents, but uh, they go be a little bit uh, stronger than the end, and have a couple guys hurt. And, uh, but they look like a Toronto is coming in town, and uh, so one of the guys, they, they hit a lot of home run last year, the two years in the row, and um, they have a good defense, good pitching, and uh, I hope to be doing can match with this guy, because he's 
it's a good club, and, uh, and I believe it can go be a good series, but I don't know. It's all the pen, the pitcher, and and the hit if he can continue on and play defense and uh, and I'll go from there because this is a good team, good hitter, and good pitching in there. That I see a good power hitter too. Mm -hmm. You guys have any snow up your way? The what? You guys have any snow up your way? No, no, no. <laughs> Yeah, we woke up to snow down here today, so I just had to wonder if there was any snow up your way, too. So. No, it's nothing. I'm dying out again. I think it all <laughs> done with that. It's a little cool, I bet. <laughs> all right. Well, Juan, thanks for your time this morning. You have a great week. All right. This ends for you, guys. All right. We'll talk bye to you bye. later. That's about all the time we have for this week's edition of Twins Talk with Senior Smoke. Remember, we post to hbci.com slash sports every Monday at 11 in the a.m. And don't forget to email us the Bearing Gear Word of the Week. To Senior Smoke at HBCI.com for your chance at the drawing for four tickets behind home plate to see the Twins and Rangers go toe to toe at Target Field on May 26th. Thanks again for joining us. For Juan Berenguer, I'm Landon Evanson, and we'll talk to you in a week.